Hello everybody and welcome to Northwestern. Uh, I will be your tour guide today. My name is Elam Blackwell. I am a fourth year at Northwestern studying physics and theater. Uh, crazy combo, I know. Uh, I'm originally from Sugar Land, Texas. Uh, and when I'm not giving tours, you can find me on campus at the Dearborn Observatory, uh, operating what used to be the world's largest telescope. Now, without much further ado, let's get started. Well, welcome to Northwestern. Uh, a little bit of history about Northwestern before we get officially started on the tour. Northwestern was founded in 1851 by a group of Methodist ministers. Uh, while we no longer have any connection to the Methodist church, uh, our original mascot was actually known as the Fighting Methodists. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we officially started classes in 1855. And since then, uh, we've been here in Evanston, Illinois. So we are in the town of Evanston. Uh, we are right north of Chicago, which we might get to see a sneak peek of the skyline later. Um, but yeah, Evanston is a great college town, has everything a student would possibly need as, as a college student, uh, including, you know, walking a five minute walk to Target, uh, CVS, uh, a bunch of great restaurants. Evanston is informally known as the dining capital of the North Shore of Chicago. Uh, so it's a great place to find different places to eat. Uh, if you ever are looking for uh, a, a really interesting spot to eat, you can ask any Northwestern student and they would be happy to tell you their favorite uh, Evanston locales. Uh, it's also a great city that partners great with Northwestern. There's this thing called the wild card advantage, which basically means if you show your student uh, ID to a lot of the different places at uh, or around Evanston, they will give you up to a 20% discount. And so it's really affordable to be a college student here in Evanston. Now, obviously Northwestern is also near another little town uh, that you might know as Chicago. Uh, it's a really, really close uh, to Northwestern, only about a 30 minute drive away. Uh, and if you don't have a car, it's super accessible as well. There are three main ways to get into the city of Chicago. Um, First is my favorite, known as the Intercampus Shuttle. So the Intercampus Shuttle is basically a bus that is absolutely free to all Northwestern students that will take you right down into the loop uh, in Chicago, and it will drop you off um, at Northwestern's downtown campus uh, where our graduate medical and law schools are. Now, apart from that, you can also take the, uh, the L or the elevated train system. It's only about two or three dollars and it'll get you wherever you need to go in Chicago in about an hour. Uh, and it's really, really popular if you're going down to see a show or uh, go ice skating, whatever might be happening on a Friday or Saturday night. The L is one of my favorite ways to get down into the city. And then finally, if you need to get there a little bit quicker, we also have the Metra. It's about a five minute walk uh, away from here. And uh, you can get on there and get into the middle of the city in 20 minutes. It's a little more expensive, but in any case, Chicago is super accessible from the city of Evanston. And uh, there's a bunch of great places to, uh, to go and, and things to see in Chicago. As a theater student, I've seen countless shows in the middle of the city. As a physics student, I've been able to go to colloquiums and talks given by a bunch of different people uh, in the middle of the city. And then as just a college student, I've been able to go ice skating or check out the Christmas market with my girlfriend. Um, a bunch of really great places uh, and things to do in Chicago. So here we are on the south end of campus. Uh, this is where a lot of the dorms on campus are, uh, and certainly not all of the dorms, but, but many people will live here during their uh, first two years on campus. Uh, so there is a two-year live on campus requirement uh, as a Northwestern student, uh, but that's, that's a really great opportunity to integrate yourself into the social scene and uh, just really feel like you're part of Northwestern as a community as whole. Uh, so there are two different types of dorms. Uh, there are residence halls and residential colleges. So residential colleges are very specific themed dorms. They generally tend to be a bit smaller between say 30 to 100 people. Uh, and these themes that they have are different uh, things that students are interested in studying, such as uh, the engineering residential college or the 
uh, the communications residential college. Uh, and so if you live in a dorm like this, you'll be able to uh, use programming that they have that's dedicated to that kind of thing. Uh, or there are faculty who will work with you um, who, who are at the, these dorms uh, and they uh, are specifically interested in that, that subject as well. And then finally, uh, there are um, amenities in these dorms that uh, will help you depending on what theme that you're looking at. Uh, so for example, in the communications residential college, there is a uh, radio studio in the basement if you're interested in recording radio shows or podcasts uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I will also say I lived in a residential college my first two years at Northwestern and it was a fantastic experience. Willard Residential College, which is actually just right back there. Um, but yeah, I, I loved my time in a residential college. But if you're looking for something a little more typical of your college experience, uh, that's going to be a residential hall. So these residential halls uh, are generally larger, maybe uh, 200 to 500 students. Uh, and they're not themed in any way. They're just your run of the mill college dorm. It's got everything you could possibly need from free laundry, uh, air conditioning, heating, all that kind of stuff. And some really, really great uh, dorm rooms. Um, the other nice thing is that uh, there's no dorm on campus that I know of that I wouldn't like to live in. And there are 26 different options uh, as uh, for different dorms. And so if you're interested in living anywhere on campus, you'll find a dorm that you like. Uh, and, and it's a really great opportunity to, uh, you know, integrate yourself into a community uh, wherever you live. So this behind me is Weber Arch. It was donated by a class in 1993, uh, and it has been a part of a campus tradition uh, for decades now. Uh, so one of my favorite traditions at Northwestern is known as March Through the Arch. Uh, so what that means is as a freshman, before any of your classes begin, uh, you're going to march through this arch as we just have uh, to signify your time starting at Northwestern. And then after that, you are officially a Northwestern student and you continue to be until you march back out of the arch as a senior uh, after graduation as your final act at Northwestern. And I really, really like this tradition. I'm very excited to march out of the arch uh, this year. Uh, I think it's a great way to bookend uh, your start and finish at Northwestern and one of m many traditions that I love at Northwestern. Uh, so another example of a great tradition at uh, this school is known as the Primal Scream. It's my absolute favorite. So the Primal Scream is basically at the same time every single quarter, just before finals start, all of the students on campus scream as loud as they can at the exact same time. Uh, and this does two things. Uh, one, it freaks all of the Evanston residents out uh, a lot. And two, it also helps relieve stress just before finals start. Uh, which I think is much needed uh, as a college student. Um, I got the pleasure of doing the Primal Scream my first year in the quietest part of Northwestern, in the heart of Deering Library, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, and it's one of my favorite memories here at Northwestern. So another memory, or another tradition I should say, uh, that Northwestern has is the Rock. And we'll stop right here and talk about that a little bit. So the Rock is, uh, has been here for uh, almost a century now. It was donated by a class uh, of students. Uh, originally, it was a fountain. Uh, but one year, uh, the fountain froze and the, it stopped working. The pipes burst and it just sat there for a while. Uh, later, the fountain was uh, taken down, leaving just this rock in its place. And it s sat there until the 1950s when a intrepid group of freshmen at Northwestern uh, decided to come into this courtyard and paint the rock for the very first time. They painted it with something along the lines of freshman rule and seniors drool, which as you can imagine, the seniors were not too happy about at that time. So they, legend has it, grabbed the freshmen out of their beds the next morning and made them come here and clean it off. And so the rock was cleaned until um, the freshman senior year when they came back and repainted the rock uh, something along the lines of seniors rule and freshmen's rule. And ever since then, the rock has been painted thousands upon thousands of times. Uh, so the current, uh, you can paint the rock uh, for any reason whatsoever. I've seen the rock painted to uh, promote shows that Wildcats were having, uh, to 
be painted in protest or uh, celebration after a big uh, win with our football team. Anything that you're interested in, you can paint the rock. There are only two rules uh, when it comes to painting the rock. Uh, and the first is that you have to paint the rock under the cover of night uh, to honor those first freshmen that night that they painted the rock for the very first time. And then the second is that you have to guard the rock for 24 hours before you can paint it. Uh, so there is a camera uh, on this building behind me here, or in front of me here, uh, that uh, is constantly watching the rock to make sure that uh, these rules are being enforced. And oftentimes, maybe not in the cold uh, like we are right now, but oftentimes you'll see people camped out in front of the rock, um, guarding it for their 24 hours before they're able to paint it. Uh, and that includes throughout uh, the coldest of nights. Uh, I've only painted the rock once, uh, and that was for my dorm my freshman year. And as I was painting the rock, uh, my duty was to guard it from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the middle of February. So as you can imagine, it was pretty cold at that time, uh, but we all got sleeping bags and, and uh, as much warm clothes as we could find and huddled around playing cards in the dead of night. And then once my shift was over, the next night uh, we came and got together and painted the rock in honor of our uh, dorm 60th anniversary. Um, so yeah, it was, it was absolutely a great experience that I've had uh, and it's very, very uh, special to people at Northwestern. Uh, anybody who's painted the rock, it's one of my favorite memories, so yeah. So here we are at uh, Kresge Hall, which is home to the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, so here in Northwestern, we have six different schools. Uh, and they range from a bunch of different stuff, but they're very, very flexible. Uh, we can start walking down the uh, hallways of Kresge so you can get a feel of what it's like in one of our uh, newer buildings on campus. But yeah, we have six different schools in Northwestern. Uh, they all are focused on different things, but they're very, very flexible. I, for example, am double majoring across two different schools. Uh, and it's, it's very, very simple to uh, take classes across different schools as well. I've taken classes across four different schools uh, during my time here. And uh, it's very easy also to transfer between schools. So any, anything that you want to do at Northwestern, you'll be able to do. These schools just kind of help you uh, focus your studies uh, and, and make sure that there are advisors uh, for you no matter where you are that know exactly uh, what they're talking about in terms of any subject that you might be studying. So here at Northwestern, we are on the quarter system. Uh, so the quarter system is slightly unique, and so I like to take a little bit of time to explain what exactly it means. Uh, so at Northwestern, the quarter system, there are three different academic quarters, the fall, winter, and spring quarter. And then there's the summer quarter, which some students use to take classes, but other students also will get internships during this time, do research, or, you know, just, uh, just take the quarter off. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, very, it's, it's a great system. Uh, during a quarter, you'll generally take four different classes, as opposed to maybe five or six classes that you would take in a semester. Um, what this means is that you'll take 12 different classes over the course of uh, the year, and 48 classes on average during your time at Northwestern. Uh, this is eight classes more than you would generally take at a semester system school and uh, what that gives you is the added flexibility of adding on these extra majors or minors uh, as a physics and theater double major i really don't think that i would have been able to uh, do everything that i've done were it not for the added flexibility of the quarter system um, so the other thing about the quarter system is that classes are you know definitely shorter uh, each class is about 11 or 12 weeks long that being said Professors make sure that they really focus their classes and build them for the quarter system without just uh, trying to cram a semester's worth of content into a quarter. Uh, so in, in, there's two different types of classes in my mind that that helps with. Uh, one is your, uh, your major requirement classes. For example, uh, last quarter I was taking electromagnetism. Uh, and normally that would take one uh, semester to uh, go over, but instead we took it over two quarters, which actually meant that there was more time to focus on this class, which is really exciting because it's really a fundamental 
building block for my uh, major. But there are other classes that you're not required to take for your major uh, that are just distribution requirements. And those are going to be shorter, which means that you can focus on much more interesting topics. So instead of taking uh, the history of Latin America, you might take the history of chocolate and just focus on how that product, the production of chocolate has shaped the history of areas of Latin America. Or you might take the death of the dinosaurs as opposed to paleontology 101. And so these, these added uh, things to focus on are really exciting uh, if you're interested in the uh, quarter system. Uh, the other nice thing about the quarter system is that uh, you get two true breaks. You get to a winter break like everybody else, but you also get a spring break where you'll never have any papers due or anything like that uh, just because you know, you're in the middle uh, between quarters and you'll take a new class uh, in the next quarter. So I really love the quarter system and I think it's the perfect fit for students at Northwestern. So this is one of my favorite buildings on campus. It's known as Deering Library and it's one of our three main libraries on campus. So our libraries uh, are, are a great system. Uh, they are open generally from something crazy like seven in the morning till midnight, uh, but then over finals week and the week before finals week, they're open 24 seven. Uh, and they have a bunch of really cool stuff in it. During Library, for example, uh, has a special collections in which you can find uh, handwritten Beatles lyrics, a stuffed wildcat, and a bunch of other crazy stuff like Shakespeare's Third Folio. So that's, uh, Deering Library is also our silent library, so if you're ever interested in studying in a building that looks like Hogwarts in the absolute quiet, uh, it's a great place to go for that. Uh, our next library that we'll see in a little bit is known as Main Library. It's our largest library on campus, uh, and it has a bunch of collaboration rooms and stuff like that. Uh, it's also got most of our books on campus, and it's just a great place to go to get work done, either by yourself or with friends. Uh, a bunch of computers and all that, all that kind of stuff as well. And then finally, our, our larger, uh, another large library we have is up north, known as Mud Library. It's our STEM library, in which you can find all of the things that you would want from a library, as well as 3D printers and uh, maker space that you can use as well. Uh, so whatever you're interested in, the libraries will probably have uh, some amenities for you uh, as well. Yeah. So this big building behind me right here is known as Main Library. Uh, Main Library, like I said, is one of our three largest libraries, and it was designed uh, in the 1970s under the Brutalist architecture. In fact, if you look up Brutalism on Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure that this is the first building that comes up. Uh, so yeah, it's one of my favorite buildings on campus though, because I think it's awesome. While we're here at the libraries, I often like to talk about extracurricular educational stuff that you can get involved in while you're at Northwestern. Uh, so the first thing I like to talk about is research. Research is super common at Northwestern, especially among undergraduates. Northwestern allocates over $3.5 million every single year to just undergraduate research. So no professors will ever touch that money, no, um, uh, no graduate students will ever touch that. It's all just for undergraduate research, which means that there's a ton of grants and stuff to go around to undergraduate researchers. I've been involved in research in physics for the past two and a half years, uh, working on quantum computing stuff, which has been awesome. Uh, but if you're interested in research outside of STEM fields as well, you don't want to work in a lab or a, uh, on your computer coding things like I do, then there's also a ton of things available for you as well. Uh, I have a friend who, as their research project, wrote a musical as a theater student. Uh, I also have a friend who's working with um, with uh, a campaign offices to see how uh, different campaigns work at the local level, like mayors and stuff like that. And so any, any sort of um, research that you're interested in, you'll can, you can probably find a professor to work with you on it uh, at Northwestern. There's also some crazy grants that you can get, such as the Circumnavigators Grant. That's my favorite one to talk about. Uh, the Circumnavigators Grant is basically uh, $10,000 every year goes to one student. Uh, over the summer, they get to write a paper on whatever they want. Uh, the only limitation is that they have to travel to at least five countries on at least three continents. 
And so that paper has been about a bunch of different stuff. One of my favorite examples is a student who traveled around uh, asking people what they, how they felt about ghosts and ghost stories in different cultures around the world. Um, another student uh, is kind of a legend here at Northwestern. He traveled around uh, seeing how different cultures have uh, uh, music festivals and, and festivals of, of that nature. And so Northwestern paid him $10,000 to spend his summer backpacking across Asia, Europe, and um, South America, and going to a bunch of concerts and music festivals. Uh, and then he wrote a paper on it. So anything that you could possibly want to research, you certainly can here at Northwestern. Another thing that I like to talk about in terms of extracurricular stuff is internships. Uh, internships are super common here at Northwestern. Um, about 95% of students graduate Northwestern having had at least one internship. Uh, I mentioned in the past, there's, there's two, some ways that you can uh, get internships uh, out to, to count for class credit with the uh, Chicago Field Studies. And also if you were, uh, are in the Medill School of Journalism or our CESB School of, uh, School of Education and Social Policy. Uh, but internships are also super common over the summer. Uh, I had the pleasure of working at IBM uh, last summer, working on quantum computing stuff. And I got that connection through the research that I was doing at Northwestern. I certainly would not have been able to, to uh, meet these people had, were it not for uh, Northwestern and their Office of uh, Career Advancement. Um, they do a great job of making sure that your resume is up to date, uh, making sure that you uh, get to work on different... Uh, um, um, Sorry, they do a great job of making sure that your resume is up to date and uh, hosting different mock uh, interviews for you to make sure that Northwestern students are always the most qualified that they possibly can be. Uh, and then finally, we like to talk about uh, study abroad. So in non-COVID times, uh, students, about a third of Northwestern students will study abroad. Uh, obviously that number is a little bit different right now, but we hope to get it back up uh, to at least a third, if not more, uh, as COVID hopefully comes to an end soon. Um, but yeah, study abroad is super accessible. Uh, your financial aid from Northwestern travels with you no matter where you go. And so it's often uh, cheaper to study abroad than it is to study at Northwestern sometimes. And so um, it's, it's really accessible. You can study abroad uh, from the beginning of your freshman year to the end of your senior year. So no matter what you, where you are in your Northwestern journey, it's really, really accessible. Um, and you can study in a bunch of different places. We have formal connections with over 50 different programs in different countries. Uh, but there is an office just dedicated to forging new connections for you if you want to study in any place uh, apart from the United States. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super accessible that way as well. So this behind me is Norris University Center or our student center. Uh, it's, it's a huge place filled with a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, on the floor, on the, uh, on the ground floor, I guess, uh, there is um, a bunch of great places to eat, like I've mentioned earlier. Um, and it's, it's a great place to go and grab lunch or dinner uh, right after your classes. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's also a great place to study. Uh, in the basement, there is a room for games and an art studio and a bunch of stuff like that. On the first floor, uh, there's also one of the most popular places at Northwestern, which is our Starbucks, uh, affectionately known as Norbucks because it's in Norris. Uh, and it is very, very popular, especially during the winter months uh, to get a hot beverage. And then the rest of the, uh, uh, of the student center is populated with just uh, rooms that are devoted to student groups. Uh, so no class will ever take place in Norris and no professor can ever uh, rent out these rooms nor teaching assistant. They're all four different clubs and organizations at Northwestern, which is good because we have a lot of clubs and organizations at Northwestern. Um, the most recent count is that we have over 500 different student groups uh, ranging from anything you could possibly imagine. Some of my favorites to point out are the Happiness Club, uh, which throws candy at people during finals week. They also randomly will bring in puppies to the library uh, to cuddle with for a study break um, and stuff like that. Their, their main goal is just to promote happiness at Northwestern, which I think is awesome. Uh, another uh, one of my favorite clubs to highlight is the Trash Talking Chess Club. Uh, which is different from our chess club, which is also different from our chess watching club. 
Uh, so if you're interested in chess, watching chess, or trash talking while you're playing chess, uh, we have clubs here for you for any of those things. Um, now, there are a, a bunch of different student groups uh, here at Northwestern, but if there is a group that you want to exist that doesn't already, it's also super easy to create your own. All you need is a group of friends uh, and a, any faculty on campus that will sponsor it. And then after that, you can get funding money from the university and space in Norris to, uh, to host your uh, student group, which is why it's, it's really easy to, uh, to create. And that's why there are so many uh, here at Northwestern. So this awesome place behind me is known as the Lake Phil. It didn't used to exist here uh, 60 or 70 years ago. Um, Northwestern was looking to expand its campus uh, back in the 60s, uh, but they wanted to, they, they asked Evanston where they could expand to. And Evanston as a city said, we would love for you to expand. We just don't really have any space for you to the north, south, or west. So that left one direction, east, right into the lake. Uh, but Northwestern said that that was not a problem and uh, made their own land by filling in all of this land you see behind me uh, with, with uh, rock and sand uh, imported from Indiana. So it's been here uh, for a while, and it's one of my favorite places on campus uh, for three reasons. One, uh, it's because it's just an amazing place to hang out uh, when it's a little warmer outside, I should say. You can get a great view of, um, North, uh, of, of Chicago, the skyline, when you're hanging out on the lake fill, uh, you can, the trees are perfectly spaced to uh, put up hammocks. And uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful place to, uh, to go. Uh, my second reason that I love it so much is because as with all green spaces at Northwestern, the lake fill is 100% covered by Wi-Fi, which means that at any time you can go uh, and get some work done while you're outside instead of sitting inside in an office. Uh, it's a great place to, to do some final studying during spring quarter or um, or stuff like that to make sure that you get your outdoors time while also maintaining your, uh, your college student uh, time as well. Uh, and then finally, my, my other reason that I like the Lake Phil so much is it is home to uh, one of our great uh, traditions at Northwestern called Dillo Day or Armadillo Day. Um, so Dillo Day for short is the, longest, or the largest student run music festival in the country. Uh, and it is absolutely phenomenal. It happens at the end of the year, uh, end of May, beginning of June every year. And it is a, a great time. Uh, they get a bunch of really, really impressive artists here. Uh, we're, we're all anxiously awaiting to see who the artists are this year. Uh, but in the past, we've had people come in like ASAP Ferg and Dea were here my freshman year. Uh, some more famous people might be in the past. They've had uh, Smash Mouth, 2 Chains. Uh, so anybody could come here uh, at any point uh, for Dillo, which is very, very exciting. Uh, and it completely transforms the lake fill with uh, food trucks and a Ferris wheel and stages for student artists as well as for um, professional artists. And it's a great tradition that we have here at Northwestern. So this lovely building behind me here is known as the Ryan Center for the Musical Arts. Uh, we also know it as SS Beenan. Uh, one, because it's home to the Beenan School of Music, and two, because it kind of looks like a cruise ship while you're on Lake Michigan. Um, in any case, this is where all of our musical stuff uh, happens on campus. Um, all of the Beenan classes are in there, and we have uh, a concert hall in there uh, that is used by both uh, professional people and, as, uh, and uh, student concerts as well. Uh, and it's an it's a absolutely beautiful building. I will say though, if you're not interested in majoring in music, but you still want to be involved in music, it's super easy to be involved in Northwestern. Uh, we have um, 14 different acapella groups. We also have the marching band and a concert band that is available for um, all Northwestern students to audition for. Uh, and then we also have um, yeah, choirs and stuff like that. So any kind of musical experience that you're interested in having, you don't have to be majoring in uh, music for it. So this building behind me here now is the Pick Stay Your Concert Hall. Uh, it is uh, where we have a lot of our different guests from Northwestern come in. Um, we've had people in here like Obama, 
uh, a long time ago. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. was here actually in this building. We've also had people like Yo-Yo Ma and Pete Davidson uh, here, which is absolutely amazing. So there's been a very large eclectic group of people who have uh, performed here and spoken here. Uh, and you never know who you're gonna get uh, when you're uh, at Northwestern. So this building here is known as the Block Museum of Art. Uh, it is a fully functioning museum and it's open to everybody uh, for free. Um, it is uh, run by uh, student docents. And so if you're interested in learning about how a museum operates, it's also a great uh, way to uh, learn about that as a work study job. And then they also uh, have rotating uh, exhibits throughout uh, each quarter. So you can always go in and see something new in terms of visual arts. And then the final thing that we'll highlight here is the uh, Wirtz Performing Arts Center. Uh, we have two main theaters here, the Barber Theater and the Lewis Theater. Uh, we also have a bunch of black boxes further into the building and a bunch of rehearsal spaces. Uh, this is one of my favorite buildings on campus because I spent a lot of time there in rehearsal and class uh, for theater stuff. Um, we have over 100, sorry, we have over 80 uh, theater productions every single year. Uh, ranging from dance to uh, just straight acting to musical theater. And so if you're interested in any of that, they're all open to audition for anybody. You don't have to be majoring in theater. Um, you can just walk in and audition for any of these shows, which is absolutely great. Um, we also have students who uh, do all of the tech for these shows and produce the shows and direct the shows. So if you're interested in any of that, theater is really easy to get involved with. Uh, at Northwestern, as is hopefully all of the arts that I've uh, just pointed out. So this is the very end of the tour. I wanna to thank everybody who continued to watch to this point. Um, the thing that we like to end tours on is our Why Northwestern statement. So if you've looked at the uh, application to, North to Northwestern at all, uh, you'll know that uh, there is a question that's simply, why Northwestern? So I like to say what I uh, put on that during when I applied to help you out a little bit if you're considering applying to Northwestern. So when I was looking for th four different schools, uh, I really w wanted somewhere that had a ton of flexibility. And Northwestern checked all of those boxes uh, in all the ways that I was looking for flexibility. One, it's a relatively small uh, college campus uh, and has the resources of a larger school uh, with a top research institution. Uh, it also has the resources of a city nearby while also maintaining that small college town feel. More importantly, I really wanted to study both physics and theater, which is a pretty crazy combination. And I couldn't find any other school that I was excited about that uh, did both of those well. And Northwestern uh, has a phenomenal theater program with some crazy alumni, uh, but their physics program is uh, also incredible. I've had some amazing experiences doing uh, research work with uh, physicists at Northwestern, uh, and it's been a great, great uh, opportunity for me to study here uh, with physics. And then the final thing that I really was looking for in terms of flexibility was a school that you know, had a, a, a great reputation and great academics, and as a top 10 school, Northwestern, uh, certainly has both of those. But I also wanted a school that didn't take itself so seriously that the students there were not able to have fun over the weekends and have those classic college experiences that I was so excited to have. And Northwestern has done both perfectly. Uh, I have had some, some you know, long nights studying and, and writing papers and, and uh, doing finals and stuff like that. But I've also had some long nights, you know, playing games with my friends or going to Burger King at three in the morning or going into the middle of Chicago on a Friday night just because we can. And I think that Northwestern has a perfect blend of, um, you know, college life as well as uh, rigorous academics. And I think overall Northwestern uh, has certainly been uh, my one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, so that's why my Northwest, well, that's my why Northwestern. Uh, and I hope you have enjoyed uh, the tour. Uh, and thank you so much again for watching until the very end. Bye. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you really liked it and want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, do that here. If you want to see another tour just like this one, but with somebody else talking at you, you can find that down here. And otherwise, thank you again.